We scientists who release this immense power have overwhelming... It began with a simulation, a flicker of entangled quantum bits in a cold, silent lab somewhere deep inside a quantum processor became something far stranger than what anyone expected. Not a glitch, not a visual model, something real, a whisper of space-time emerging from code. In early 2025, a quantum chip seemed to simulate a wormhole. Not an artistic metaphor or a digital trick, but a tangible structure mimicking the fabric of reality itself. For the scientists watching, it wasn't just a moment of achievement. It was a moment of reckoning. Because what they were seeing didn't just reflect the laws of physics. It began to challenge them. Until now, we believed computation and reality were separate realms. Computers were the tools, and nature was the subject. But that line is starting to dissolve. What if the quantum machines we're building today don't just analyze the universe, but begin to create it? And here's where things take a turn so wild, so delicate, it borders on madness. Einstein, the very mind who once stood alone in the world with his theories of relativity, famously resisted the core of quantum mechanics. He distrusted its uncertainty, its randomness. He believed there had to be something more, a deeper order beneath the chaos. And though he gave us one of the most beautiful sets of equations ever devised, the field equations of general relativity, which describe how matter curves spacetime and creates gravity, he never made peace with the quantum world. He could never accept entanglement, calling it spooky action at a distance. But now, in a twist of poetic irony, that spooky action may be the missing piece he searched for all his life. Because in 2025, something extraordinary happened. A group of theoretical physicists, led by researchers like Florian Neukart at Leiden University, proposed something unthinkable. A modification to Einstein's very own field equations. Not a replacement, an addition. They introduced a term that Einstein could never have, a term based on quantum information itself. This isn't some science fiction fantasy. This new idea, this informational stress energy tensor, was published in the Annals of Physics, one of the most respected journals in the scientific world. The proposal? That entangled quantum information doesn't just exist. It exerts pressure. It bends space. It changes gravity. Let that sink in. We've always believed that space bends around mass, stars, planets, galaxies. But now we're learning that space might bend around information, around how entangled a region of the universe is. The more tightly connected, the more warped the geometry of space-time might become. That changes everything. Because if entangled information really does alter the shape of the cosmos, then quantum computers, machines made of highly entangled particles, could themselves be bending reality. Even today, in their earliest, most fragile forms, these processors are built from webs of entangled qubits. As we scale them up, making them more complex, more deeply interconnected, we might cross a line, a moment where the machine isn't just simulating space, it's affecting it. Picture this. A quantum processor, dense with entanglement, becomes so rich in internal complexity that it subtly warps the space-time around it. Not visibly, not yet, but measurably. The device would no longer be just a passive observer of the laws of nature. It would be participating in them. And that is where the fear begins. Because we don't yet understand what this really means. Are we writing new physics? Or are we merely uncovering what was always there? hidden behind the veil of the observable. Either way, the tools are now in our hands, and they are unlike anything we've had before. Back in 2022, long before the newer discoveries, researchers at Google and Caltech used the Sycamore quantum processor to simulate something astonishing, a traversable wormhole. This wasn't a theoretical drawing or a sci-fi demonstration. They entangled qubits in a very precise way creating a structure that allowed information to pass through one side and emerge on the other, just like a wormhole would behave. Lead researcher Maria Spiropoulou said the data left her shaken, not amazed, not impressed, shaken, because the experiment seemed to confirm a radical idea, one so controversial that even Einstein himself might have refused to believe it. 
It's called ER equals EPR. It means that Einstein-Rosen bridges, wormholes, and quantum entanglement might actually be the same thing. If that's true, then when we entangle qubits, we're not just creating abstract quantum connections. We're weaving the threads of space-time itself. That's not a metaphor. That's the actual hypothesis being taken seriously by physicists around the world. Now ask yourself, what happens when we scale this up? What happens when we entangle thousands, then millions, of qubits in precise, deliberate patterns? Do we create wormholes? Do we generate patches of real, navigable space? Do we begin building baby universes, each one governed by its own internal laws, born from the computations of a human-made device? The experiments we've conducted so far are small. They're crude, but they're real, and they're growing more sophisticated with every passing month. If you could peer into one of these quantum systems, it wouldn't look like a collection of wires and circuits. It would look like something alive, a shimmering, shifting web of possibilities. Each qubit a thread, each entangled pair a bridge, each configuration a new version of reality flickering into being. It's not science fiction. It's happening right now, in real laboratories, with real quantum processors. And it brings us closer and closer to a question we're not sure we're ready to answer. Are we simulating reality, or are we creating it? Because as these quantum systems grow in power, their behavior begins to mirror the most mysterious objects in the universe. Black holes. Black holes are no longer just cosmic monsters that swallow light and time. We now believe they are perfect information storage devices. They encode data on their surface, compressing it to the maximum possible density. From this emerged the holographic principle. The idea that everything we see, hear, touch, and know may actually be a three-dimensional projection of information stored on a two-dimensional boundary. It's one thing to theorize about space-time. It's another to build machines that might be manufacturing it. Quantum computers were born to solve problems that classical computers couldn't touch. They manipulate information not in binary, but in waves of uncertainty. Particles that can be in two states at once, entangled with others, whispering secrets across space and time. But somewhere along this journey of code and computation, something unexpected happened. We stopped just watching the universe. We started copying it. And now, in labs from Maryland to Zurich to Tokyo, experiments are beginning to show us just how deep the rabbit hole goes. One of the most extraordinary of these came between 2023 and 2025. Researchers at the University of Maryland used trapped ion quantum processors, machines that manipulate individual atoms suspended in electromagnetic fields, to simulate a quantum field theory known as the Schwinger model. This isn't just an obscure bit of physics trivia. The Schwinger model combines quantum mechanics with special relativity, the very two worlds Einstein and his generation struggled to reconcile. And the result? They recreated a process where particles and antiparticles spring into existence from nothing, from the vacuum itself. It's a phenomenon that, in the natural world, requires both quantum mechanics and Einstein's special relativity. And now, it's been witnessed in a machine built by human hands. These are not just simulations in the traditional sense, like weather models or traffic flow diagrams. These are physical systems whose behavior directly mimics the behavior of nature. A kind of parallel universe that unfolds not in the vastness of space, but in the silence of a superconducting chamber. Quantum computers aren't just tools anymore. They're becoming arenas where physics plays itself out. That distinction changes everything. Because if you can recreate a black hole's informational structure in a lab, or mimic the behavior of a wormhole using entangled qubits, if you can trigger time delays using synthetic curvature caused by entanglement, then we're no longer just students of the cosmos. We're stepping into the role of architects. One proposed experiment is both dazzling and terrifying in its implications. Scientists are planning time delay experiments. Imagine a signal traveling through a heavily entangled region of a quantum processor. If that entanglement truly mimics space-time curvature, as the math suggests, the signal might be slowed, warped, delayed, just like it would be near a massive object a quantum version of gravitational time dilation. We're talking about actual, testable distortions in the flow of time. 
inside a man-made device. And it doesn't stop there. Some theorists believe that if you entangle enough qubits in the right way, on a massive enough scale, the system itself might start exerting gravitational force. Not metaphorically, literally. If Florian Neukart's informational stress energy tensor is correct, a quantum computer might begin to curve space around it, like a star does. But instead of mass, the curvature would be caused by how much information is entangled within the device. It sounds like science fiction. And yet, it's being taken seriously by some of the most respected minds in physics. DARPA is funding it. The Department of Energy is watching closely. Journals like Nature and Physical Review Letters are publishing the results. This isn't fringe theory anymore. It's at the cutting edge of human understanding, and it leads to a question that haunts every lab working on this technology. What happens when simulation becomes indistinguishable from creation? Quantum processors are already building entanglement maps that mirror the geometry of space. As they grow more powerful, they might begin to cross a threshold, a moment where their internal physics are no longer just analogies, but active participants in the same processes that govern the universe. And this is where Einstein returns to the story. He never accepted the randomness of quantum mechanics. He believed in a deeper order, a hidden structure beneath the uncertainty. He spent the last decades of his life searching for a unified field theory, something that could bring together gravity and electromagnetism without needing the strange rules of quantum physics. He never found it. And he died believing it might not exist. But now, the very quantum entanglement Einstein dismissed, the phenomenon he once ridiculed as spooky action at a distance, may be the thread that ties gravity and quantum mechanics together. It's ironic, poetic even. Einstein's greatest frustration might be the key to completing the very equation he spent his life searching for. Because the new view emerging in physics isn't just about merging gravity with quantum theory. It's about realizing that everything, matter, energy, space, even time, might be built from information. And that information behaves according to patterns we can now manipulate with our machines. That's why quantum computers matter so much more than most people realize. They're not just faster calculators. They're the first devices in history that interact with reality at its most fundamental level. The level of bits and relationships, not particles and forces. We've always thought the universe was made of things. Atoms, electrons, photons. But what if it's made of relationships? Of how things connect, entangle, align? That would mean the very fabric of the universe is mathematical. Not in the sense of equations written on a chalkboard, but in the sense of computation, processes, algorithms, code, quantum code. And that brings us to a theory so bold, so staggering in scope, it's hard to even talk about without feeling dizzy. The idea that the universe itself is not just governed by computation, it is computation. A quantum compression algorithm running in real time a cosmic machine calculating its next moment. Black holes behave like information processors. Entangled qubits behave like black holes. Space-time warps around patterns of entanglement. Quantum processors build those patterns on command. So what if what we're seeing isn't coincidence? What if the universe itself is running a kind of quantum code, and we've just started to replicate its functions? This isn't mysticism. It's math, it's logic, it's experiment. It's what happens when you stare too long into the heart of the equations and realize they might be staring back. We've always wanted to know how the universe works. Now we're building